господа, с небольшим опозданием, но все-таки начинаем наш клуб, который еще жизнь, на жизнь как источник практики. Life as the source of uh, practical knowledge. And we decided that each of the colleagues would introduce themselves. I'll start with myself. I'm German Korelsky. I'm a PhD in philosophy and transpersonal psychology. And I'm a co-founder of the ETT. And from 1994, I'm much into transpersonal psychology, and my favorite topic is, and this is my favorite field where I find the meanings for my own life, and for many years I share my knowledge and practices with the people who are interested in that field as well. And together with uh, Steven Schmitz uh, will be the uh, uh, moderators of this uh, roundtable, and I'd like to open this roundtable uh, today, just sharing with you my vision, how the transpersonal approach is uh, permeating uh, through all of our lives. Penetrating them. Uh, our everyday lives is an existential training. Our life teaches us many things, but uh, not often we uh, see our lives as a test, as a training. Sometimes just a pass, a time passes by and we fail to notice that. Still, uh, discussing the transpersonal approach, uh, we're also uh, touching the aspect of the altered states of mind of consciousness, and we know that we, uh, this is the experience like you can go hungry, you can overgorge on food, suffer from cold or heat, uh, breathing techniques, uh, different uh, bodily practices, even sexual practices like Tantra, uh, different uh, deprivations. Also, peak uh, stresses uh, in life. And from what I've uh, listed uh, here, it gave us uh, at least purposely to touch uh, or get embrace the uh, uh, trans states. They can be very deep or lighter if something unusual happens to us, for example. Maybe not. I just want to uh, tell you a bit about the benefits of the altered states of uh, consciousness, where, where we can uh, view the different aspects of this world from different angles. So the, uh, the meanings are expanded, and therefore we uh, get more freedom within our relationships and in our studies and research. And um, during the altered state of consciousness, we can uh, solve some dualities, we uh, become whole, and living through this, uh, may give us the direction for ev uh, evolution and this uh, feeling, a uh, sense of wholeness, of uh, oneness. This could be like an etalon, a standard for uh, the worldview. And being in such states uh, permits assess, uh, uh, to uh, touch upon the unconscious and, and get the knowledge and healing through that as well. Another important moment for the modern man, the practice of working with altered states of mind, is an opportunity uh, to come over the barrier of hyper-control Hyper-control is instinctive for your safety, but wherever there is hyper-control, uh, there is a bind of losing control, of the fear of uh, uh, madness and the fear of uh, death. 
the practices of working in the altered states um, of mind uh, permits us to overcome these fears. You don't have to especially go to trainings or congresses. You may get psychotherapy treatments. But this is uh, what we do on purpose, mindfully. Sometimes we just do nothing and just be more attentive to each and every moment of your life because uh, even life itself is our main teacher and therapist. And uh, it permits us to achieve this in new states of mind, new emotions, feelings, reflections. This fe feeds uh, your impressions, your mind. Thus, this roundtable's topic today is life itself, which gives us the opportunity to receive the tools for trans development, for knowledge. And as it's known, if you can change yourself, you can change your reality, the world around you. Thank you very much. I give the floor now to my colleague, Steven Schmitz, uh, please. Okay, thank you, Governor. <coughs> I want to also welcome all of you to this Спасибо. talk. Um, добро на наш стол. I'm very happy to be here. Я очень счастлив присутствовать здесь среди выдающихся участников этой панели. Они удивительные психологи. Я очень счастлив поделиться моим видением этого, этой темы и повседневной жизни в практиках и услышать, что имеете вы сказать на эту тему. Когда мне было 12, я выбрал уйти из католической церкви и отправиться в путешествие, духовное путешествие, чтобы найти свой путь. Это было полное радости и практики жизни, которую я получил. Я был благодарен за это в 1974 после многих лет поиска я стал практиком. Я посвятил себя практике Дзао Дзэна и шаманизма, и этим я занимался непрерывно с тех пор. Вам может показаться, что это странная комбинация, если вы смотрите на то, что представляет Дзен Монах и Шаман, но эти две разные стороны, они комплементарны, и выдвигают вперед одно целое понимание э, искусства спиритуализма. У меня докторская степень трансперсональной психологии. Сейчас я э, президентском совете э, Американского совета трансперсонологии а также международный учитель, кауч. Я даю курсы в психологии и психологии. Например, то, что Николай уже упоминал. Я с ним согласен в том, что здоровые отношения между людьми – это ключ к лучшему миру. Когда я думал о в этой теме сегодня uh, я решил, что расскажу о, о том, что с самого начала я понимал, что духовность а, необходима в ее условиях, это ее включенность в современную жизнь. Это не что-то, что я делаю один раз в неделю, когда просто хожу на службу в церковь. Это не то, чем я практик... практикую, когда я сижу в медитации или провожу ритуал. Каждый момент моей жизни повседневной должен стать практиком. Как я общаюсь с своей женой, особенно когда я в состоянии усталости или злоба. Что я делаю, когда я еду по дороге на машине, и вдруг кто-то меня подрезает. 
Что я делаю а, с моей энергией? Как я с ней работаю? Я работаю с ней в позитивном или в негативном ключе. Это этот сигнал проснуться и внимательно обращаться с каждым моментом моей жизни, насколько это возможно человеку, быть э, пробужденным, полностью присутствовать э, в, в данном моменте. Значит, работа Владимира Карлоса Констанеда напомнила мне об одной цитате, которую я раньше нашел в одной из книг Констанеда. Там он говорит, что разница между обычным человеком и воином, то, что обычный человек видит все как благословение или наказание. Все, что хорошее, с высокой энергией, все, что плохое, как низкая, плохая энергия. А воин видит все как испытание. И так я смотрю на все в моей жизни, даже радость и благословение какое-то. Это тоже для меня испытание, искушение, которое мне дается, чтобы узнать, как дальше расти над собой, как растягиваться, развиваться, чтобы становиться лучшим человеком. И для меня повседневная жизнь — это замечательная как бы, сцена для развития и жизни. Я также создал дома у себя святилище. И одна из вещей, которая там стоит, это колесо здоровья. Я произношу каждое утро шаманские молитвы. Я соединяюсь с Духом Земли и произношу благодарность всем вещам, которые приходят в мою жизнь. И я благодарю всех духов за каждый мой день. И каждый день я значит, приношу, приношу в этот день свою, свою связь с духом. Good day, everyone again. I'm Marina Belakurova. I was at the plenary session today, this morning, making a presentation. I'm a psychotherapist. I uh, work with uh, the secondary rebirthings, so my practice of uh, living uh, each and every day of your life fully. Uh, I have this intrinsic uh, uh, strive to help any person who wants to start this most important process in uh, their lives. Several year ago uh, with the German, we were at the big uh, opening of the Buddhist Center in Moscow. It was an honor and pleasure to uh, meet uh, the masters and the teachers, the elders, and it was very likewise and mutual. And after that meeting, they asked me to become a moderator on the subjects that might be of interest, how the Buddhist teachers and elders uh, could uh, uh, find a common language in fields of interaction with uh, professional psychotherapists. There were a lot of uh, important and interesting insights throughout our collaboration, but uh, now I'd like just to share about my 
empirical vision which came to me at the end of such uh, meetings in what sequence is it uh, necessary or just good to be evolving for a person or self-develop if one realizes that you're just something bigger than you are, what you are yourself And maybe the training should support this uh, wish and will of a person to change. This is what support these important steps. Maybe it's just a mix from the humanistic psychology, all the tools. And the next step could be trainings which deal with the breathing obstructions because they're most emotions are concentrated, different breathing practices. And also getting free, uh, free from any uh, external judgments or resources like attention, your clothes, and uh, turning back to yourself, to your inner powers, to open them up. The next step could be uh, uh, art therapy because you can uh, see a new image of yourself not just visualize it psychologically but also project it to different outside objects because when when you're in that flow of being in touch you're a co-creator this is a magical moment and, and I can uh, call upon everybody to make beautiful things, so we'll like them all together, enjoy them. The next step could be the systematic and the field techniques and studies like uh, psychotraumas, uh, con constellations, so uh, people would be aware of what is happening and the personal fields and social fields as well as vocal techniques. Uh, the next step is uh, bodily expressions. When you, there comes a time when you need to learn the new moves, how you move. And the next step is trainings for uh, changing of the experience of yourself, the integral method. And last but not least is uh, choosing your own path, your own spiritual way. For me and my close colleagues, this has become the uh, Mina Santiago is uh, my path. We uh, the Camino spiritual way in Spain, this pilgrimage, we have been leading groups for many years, and I'd say that a spiritual practice is what every person chooses for him or herself, and what uh, permits us to evolve uh, in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Dear colleagues, or uh, uh, the, the colleagues of mind, I can even call you that. I'm most pleasured and honored to be in such a. I'm uh, Julia, and I'm PhD in medical sciences. And uh, my fields of uh, practices are in two directions. On one hand, I'm training and certifying psychotherapists, and it's a lengthy education at the Kazan State uh, Medical <coughs> Academy. It's like postgraduate studies. And the second sphere is practical work with the patients and clients as a psychotherapist. And I'd like to tell you that uh, both of these fields are very much alike or similar because training a psychotherapist also 
involves a lengthy work or collaboration with their clinical doctors and patients. So my, my logo, I take it from the, the Pearl's works that psychotherapy is too good just to be used on patients. And maybe the slogo motto has been accompanying me throughout my life because psychotherapy for me is indeed an image of life itself. And again, I would separate here two fields. When you're a professional psychotherapist, you have one practice or area of practice. And one of the criteria, if uh, you're doing your practice right, if we can use that word or to do this judgment, is whether you as a professional psych a psychotherapist li love or like your job doing it. So I tell uh, all the doctors that you're doing something wrong if you're not receiving pleasure. And perhaps it's one of the criteria in the practice of psychotherapy. It's like a self-therapy for doctors, for medical workers. And another field could be uh, the everyday practice, your everyday life, which has <coughs> several aspects as well. I like the a phrase from someone here at the second day of the conference that, like, your life should be a prayer, then you should not be a, a, a saying a particular pr prayer because for me it's very important I can uh, divide the events in my life into pleasurable and which had some uh, usefulness and if you treat your life in such a way that all your events are either pleasurable or useful then you're focused and it becomes your everyday practice, personal practice. How to work with emotions. I also love the phrase today or yesterday that there's an empirical observer observing something, somebody else who observes another person still. When you're not your emotion, whatever it is, when you're just uh, self-observing yourself, only then, even not suppressing this emotion, just feeling or living through it, through this emotion, you can uh, make any event or ordeal in your life uh, into a test in life. And psychotherapy is my love. Since my school years, I was I wanted to become a psychotherapist, and in college, when studying, but uh, there was no psychotherapy as a major at that time in colleges. Still, uh, trying out different models of psychotherapy, like. Uh, NLP, Erickson's uh, hypnosis, transpersonal psychology has become something for me to get all these points together and unite them in my own personal uh, authorized course and I can demonstrate it uh, throughout my workshop for everyone willing to take part. And um, I'm the patent holder for this uh, methodology. In the last several years, we've uh, treated uh, hundreds of patients and clients. And some of them were even professional psychotherapists as well. Thus, uh, transpersonal psychology is the 
foundation of your attitude towards life, accepting it as your adventure. And maybe if you treat it as a test or a trial or deal, is what I would uh, forego or wouldn't want. I still want to envision my life as an adventure, whatever it brings me. And such approach in psychotherapy as your way of life, lifestyle, your mindset uh, brings much joy and fulfillment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again. I even don't know what to say. For starters, I'm in the listener mode today. <laughs> Maybe I'm just uh, more of a practitioner. Well, my first practice, as I told you, are the shamanic festivals, the call of 13 shamans, where shamans share their knowledge and, and insights. And up the hill and the Tuvinian mountains, they get uh, their insights through a vision quest. That's very interesting. Uh, my second professional field is uh, Thro throat singing in different uh, styles and we work with the voice and uh, mind states and you can even use uh, uh, musical and vocal meditations and that brings me immense pleasure as well I derive pleasure from it so these songs Aka meditations that change people. Then with the breathing practices, I teach people how to breathe properly. I treat uh, even different uh, breathing diseases and the illnesses, like uh, if your nasal passages are constrained or you have some uh, restrictions in your mouth uh, area or palate and I even see their facial expressions uh, change uh, more energy in my patients they're like a tree growing and I find the best uh, solutions for people to self-develop to through sound and uh, uh, and voice and it's like uh, first of all treating the breathing uh, teaching people how to uh, breathe properly and then sing. Oh, and who is my uh, patented uh, vocal uh, lessons or classes? I teach also a dynamic uh, uh, meditation through uh, singing, voice, movement it's a holistic system but I just uh, know the basics how to achieve uh, personal fulfillment and balance how you combine your personal powers with the universal energies and I also teach others how they can learn self-control, how to control their mind, emotions, and body. And you know that the soul and your mind and your spirit can, could be different. Well, now you're in this mindful state. I see so that someone are in not not in very much control of their bodies, but, but if you combine all 
the strength of your power, your joints will be feeling pleasure. They'll be regenerated when you connect your mind, the ecstatic mind with your body. You feel better. You can, like in shamanism, uh, much discipline is required to control all that uh, chaos created by spirits. And I'm thinking sometimes at night, oh, my joint is uh, aching. Wow, should, what should I do? Maybe I've lost the balance in my body, but then I remind myself, am I breathing properly? How can I bring uh, this balanced state back to myself? Or maybe I should use some system for a proper movement or just walk right. And when I do it right, I feel immense pleasure. I derive pleasure from the moves, movements, from the thoughts. You become blissful. You feel that bliss. This is even your spiritual uh, path for now, for your everyday life. Even now, I want to sit in a such a way that I'd be controlling my body, not the chair that I'm sitting on. I don't want to follow my back and the back of the chair. If I sit right, I can breathe properly. I feel freedom. I feel pleasure. This is what I call this uh, spiritual circle. For example, some people suffer from, don't have good eye vision since they're small and wear glasses. Why? But I, I see how doctors slap the babies when they're bored, they start crying. And, and then I start thinking, okay, my life's path, why my eyesight got worse? Am I breathing properly? Maybe that is all connected with my eyesight as well. And all these blockages, obstructions that I felt in my chest and nasal areas. And then I started to self-heal myself with the, with the voice, with the sound. And if I feel any ailments or sicknesses in myself, I, as a shaman, my mission is to self-heal myself, first of all. Through movement, through self-discipline, through self-awareness, you can learn that. And I'd like to listen to others and the shamans can suggest a lot how we should act move and what our thoughts should be in the future but we also want the feedback from ordinary people patients as well they tell us a lot too even how to move how to walk properly so Every step in your world that you take should bring you pleasure. As for uh, treating the soul, healing it, there are different states. For example, I had into a young woman. She was 28 then. And like my mother was not uh, giving me much of attention, like my sisters were uh, paying much more attention to me and bringing me up. 
and now mother is like uh, dividing her property uh, uh, that she has and she asked me a practical question and Nikolai please help us to divide it evenly between the sisters what I can do here I called her up and I'm thinking let's work together then on this issue and I bring her into the altered state of mind and we tried to connect to the spirit of your father I told her feel that space try feeling uh, yourself as your own mother what fears did you feel then only you control the fears that you have All, only you have this personal knowledge inside yourself what was your development and she started crying when she uh, was recalling these moments and there was a strong beat heartbeat I could uh, feel that and I tell her see here your mother was breastfeeding you please try to uh, relive feel the light she was bringing into your life enjoy and she started to relive to feel again these motherly feelings that she thought she missed and she promised me never to feel anything or say anything bad about her mother so you must find this love how to cleanse you clean your consciousness your mind and this is also done through achieving the altered states of uh, mind once I had a patient man 32 years old but he's afraid of dying each year this fear becomes stronger <coughs> for example there was a woman in her last months of pr pregnancies and many relatives were anxious and very much involved before the, the child birth they tried to give child the names but her brother, brother was 36 then he turned 36 but he shouldn't be experiencing this uh, fear of uh, life you know shouldn't be scared that he would die one day no so even our states are important you have to clean a person it could be just a whisper for me from me to come a person and there's a whole sea ocean of different practices in the world but you choose the right ones there is always diversity even in shamanism I can do, do this and that in shamanism but for example I don't heal a people per se I just define the, uh, their states and describe them what the states are this is what I call the power of the personal spirit and I help through sound to people ask me what song should I sing or what sounds are healing or what could uh, heal my heart that was an ancient, ancient practice formerly and a strong one even you can uh, write poems this is also expanding your mind and if my song is wrong or I cannot make it right 
it's all connected. The words, the sounds, so each uh, ailment requires its own practice. Well, I wish you luck and health. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I don't like to, uh, to name things, but I uh, tell that I am a universe, which understood that I am Dmitri. And everybody can tell the same about ourselves, but to name it more precisely, I can tell that I a mindful coach. I studied transpersonal psychology and psychotherapy and clinical psych, uh, psychology. And I'm a theologist and religious study was my first education, main object. I was an Orthodox priest as well and I've studied uh, authentical cultures of Amur River and uh, now I can describe myself as an integral researcher of practices. My personal spiritual practice is integral yoga Srila Binda, but I'm interested in all different ways and traditions, all new knowledges, experiences, information. I'm dreaming about doing Camino Santiago way, and now I know whom to ask. And our round table is to conclude, summarize all the previous roundtable because we were talking about different practices, psychotherapy as evolutionary practice. But if we are talking about spiritual practice, art and psychology, if it will not affect our everyday life, what will be the uh, sense of it, the price of this? Every person who is uh, in touch with meditation knows that if practice is not formal, if we are just sitting formally and praying formally, it, is, it has no meaning at all. All our life has to become meditation. Our life has to become a prayer or an art or a psychotherapy itself. Yesterday we watched a movie of, by Vladimir Maikov and they were mentioned two scales. To access where we can mark our evolutionary movement of our mind. One acts as the level of our mind, uh, which we can describe to overcome our egocentric state and the exit from egocentric state of mind, ethnocentric when I'm uh, focused on uh, nation and then planetary mind when we percept ourselves as part of mankind and then biosphere uh, mind when we feel ourselves as a part of all the biosphere, and then the planet-centric, cosmocentric, and uh, so we can count a lot of circles. 
And uh, we are talking about what extension of our circle and other, another X is uh, the state of mind which we can define as going deeper and the feeling of being united with other people, creatures of the universe and the source of the existence, God, Tao, we can call it using different names. But generally, geometrically, these two scales should not cross, but factically they meet in one point, which is experience of unity. If we are growing up, if the structure of our mind is, goes deeper, the state of our mind goes to the experience of being united with everybody and everything. We can name this vector, this direction as the movement towards freedom and love because these are the same because love without freedom and freedom without love uh, do not function, they just destruct and we need to achieve balance between love and freedom. We can recall the words of St. Augustine, just love and do what you want. Love in freedom, freedom in love. And of course, just this is provided by art and psychotherapy and all the things we were talking about during our conference all these days. Uh, whatever spiritual practice helps us to open uh, different dimensions of love and freedom. I'm very glad that Nikolai Orjik is sitting near me and I want to tell about, share my experience when Nikolai was praying to the universe and uh, he uh, said, I'm shaman sitting with my heart. And I felt how open was the heart of Nikolai that it uh, has all the universe inside his heart. And when Nikolai called for eagle spirit and I felt flying myself and my freedom was not limited and this experience of uh, freedom and love united that was that we need to bring into our life into our everyday life from our spiritual life and practices from art this is the aim of our life thank you all. If uh, anyone in the audience has uh, questions for the Presidium, feel free to ask them. I have a question for Steven. Такой же вопрос, как и к Николаю схожий. В ходе вашего духовного становления, развития, какое было самое запоминающееся мистическое откровение или опыт яркий? Which one? Какой-то один из них только, да? Самый знаменательный, да? Okay, there. See, I should use this. Hello. There have been many over 
Понятно, что на протяжении всей моей жизни было много таких ярких моментов. Самое значимое было, как это был как раз поиск видения, который упоминал Николай здесь, когда мне было 24. Я много изучал духовную культуру североамериканских индейцев, и меня завлекла идея пройти такой поиск видения. Понимаете, в современных обществах и американском также нет какого-то ритуала инициации мальчика в мужчины. И я хотел увидеть картину, что меня ждет в жизни, поэтому я... А, изуч... как бы, а, изучил сам, что мог, и в, пуст... в пустыне находился без, а, без еды многие дни, в пустыне, без... правда, с водой. Это был глубочайший опыт, потому что в первой половине дня я понял, что Семь дней я должен быть просто быть, никуда не идти, ничто не делать. И я стоял с трех часов дня до десяти вечера, видел восход и заход, и вдруг я услышал биение сердца своего. Очень громко. Я никогда до этого не слышал сердце. Да, я чувствую сердце, но так громко я никогда не слышал свое сердце. Я подумал, как имеющий образование в области психологии. Хорошо, я подумал, я немножко волнуюсь. Нужно потренироваться, вот дыхательные упражнения сделать, как Николай сказал. Вот. Я сработал немножко, ага, медитация, и затем прогрессивную релаксацию, расслабление, чтобы это сжимал кисти, рук и ног. И тут я хуже осознал, что все это не помогает в итоге. И, и, кстати, вот у моего прадеда и прадедов от, отца были сердечно-сосудистые заболевания. Я подумал, может быть, у меня инсульт или инфаркт. И я подумал, может быть, это... То, что я умру скоро, я сказал, матушка земля, если мне суждено умереть сегодня, это случится. И что-то изменилось в моем сознании, произошел сдвиг. В тот момент я не знал, что происходит. Я поделился с другом, а он сказал, слушай, так у тебя было шаманское путешествие, я об этом как-то не читал до этого. Но в ходе этого шаманского путешествия я встретился с двумя духами, животными силами. И я осознал для себя, что в ходе этого видения я получил вот эти две направляющие, которые помогли мне сильно в дальнейшей жизни. И я 10 дней находился в пустыне, выпил много воды, записал дневник и начал производить такие шаманские путешествия на регулярной основе. Но для меня вот этот первый поиск силы видения был очень важным в жизни оказался. Это был ресурс, инструментарий для соединения с духами, и я это мог делать каждый день в жизни. Я думаю, что это был самый глубочайший такой опыт. Спасибо. Рима. Now, uh, Rima, please. Oh, that was a, a question addressed to me too about the altered states of mind. Like what, what is, what is the, your brightest uh, personal experience or the most memorable one? I would divide these experiences 
in altered consciousness, like holothropic breathing practices connected with the uh, ISS. For me, me, these were wonderful experiences. And when I came back to, from these uh, states, that was my first uh, experience. And Vladimir Mike have helped me to relive that at that time. Uh, several psychotherapy schools, which I attended, and then throughout my uh, psychotherapy practices, holotropic uh, breathing was important, and the most uh, powerful experience was when I was, uh, there was this practice of uh, uh, bringing down uh, Jesus from the cross symbolically and a ritual. And the other one, when I was, was with several other young women, witches, and we were burnt in the bonfire. And I was seeing my god, god, godmother, and we actually have a temple uh, in, in the city of Kazan in Tatarstan, which is the godmother's table. And I was in this uh, wonderful state where I could pray for each uh, earthly being to wish them well. And Whenever there's a holotropic breathing uh, class, I just run to it because I know that uh, many more emotions, feelings, and visions are in store for me. And I was f feeling uh, like I was in World War II at the last session, like I'm carrying out uh, wounded soldiers from the field. For me, it's a pretty, uh, it, it was very touching, yes. Outside of, the, uh, or beyond psychotherapy, I felt very strongly after my father died and my teacher, Uh, now they're saying he unfortunately passed away recently, he had stronger winds than roots. Yeah, so this was the most tragic experience of, in my life, the death of my father. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Maybe uh, the other roundtable uh, members would share their experiences too in answering this question. Yes, I'd support Stephen's words. And when I was listening to Rima as well, I questioned myself what was the most powerful experience I had. And I could uh, tell you a lot about various events in the last 30 years of my life. But I'd like to start when I was seven. Seven is unique. We're not socially tied. We're still open to the cosmos, to the universe. And we can ask many questions. And I was asking myself for several years, like, where does the un universe end? And I usually have this question before going to sleep. 
I would call this myself like uh, going into the state of uh, sleeping meditation. But once I recall, I got lost for an hour. I lost myself. I was focused and stunned by this question. Where does this universe end? And it was a life and death question. And when I came back to my senses, it was uh, uh, dark at night. And I realized that I knew all the answers, what it was for, who devised it, why everything happens. So I knew I could see, and I knew all the details. I just forgot. I lost the memory of it. I tried to recall, remember it all, this knowledge. In vain. But uh, I had no knowledge, but I had the feeling I knew all. It, the, uh, this feeling remained throughout my life. Unfortunately, throughout our lives, nobody tells us you should be this and that. Oh, your job is at this office. There's no such teacher or guide. They're all just hints, shadows, signals, symbols, moves, shifts, friends repeated, events too. Maybe you like some movies and some you do not. And maybe that my second the deep experience is why I decided to uh, lead the uh, psychology from the uh, menace realized, of safety of the office or a doctor's office or hall where it's so pleasant and good receiving no, insights and uh, advice and knowledge, but it's so hard to implement it into and real life. And that's where you get this, these start getting the duality of results. So you get back into this bind and this cycle. And it repeats over again. So the internal feeling of these millennial practices, I realized that psychology has to step outside of the office. It's not just a journey. It's not just attending workshops elsewhere. Constellations, art objects, big, huge events and projects with all the immense knowledge that we get from this wonderful field of deep self-knowledge. Just really, uh, recently, I was at the Memory Garden Date International Project on Changing Your Attitude Towards Death. Maybe uh, you've heard about the Death Cafe, another international project which uh, got carried over to Moscow. And this is one of the topics that ha was uh, tabooed in the modern society, unfortunately. And maybe I could also mention the practices that uh, one should do. Maybe every day or at least once a year, it depends on where or who you are now. But this should include the following seven elements. I'd like to share that because I'm doing that. That's my path. For me, it uh, has a very deep meaning. You must have your own commitments. Unless you have a goal set, uh, which gives you a strong drive. Nothing will move in your life. Second is uh, discipline. It's not that you brush your teeth every day, uh, every day or meditate. No, you have to be self-aware why I'm doing this or that. This is the real self-discipline. You should be focused in your attention. And all your processes of what you 
doing or why you're doing it. Otherwise, it'll be just uh, stuck in the maze. Yeah, you could do, you know, sub, sub, subconscious uh, submerging, but what I'm doing, why I'm doing that? You have to regenerate uh, the support self systems like Abraham Maslow. Like uh, you can de uh, develop your, yourself or with uh, the loving children. Why you have to do anything with your people who don't love love you? So you must self regenerate your self support system. Have your own tribe of people who share your values and knowledge. And because others might be saying to you, oh, God, you've gone mad, but maybe I am even madder than you are. And this is, a, of course, a prerequisite for changing uh, the landscape where you live. If nothing changes, you get a feedback that is just a stasis. Nothing changes. The next step is your inner guide. You must learn how to stop your internal dialogue, put the questions right, listen and heed to the answers, and uh, otherwise your self-development stops. And some easiness in life, playfulness. Don't dramatize your li life, like psychotherapists tell us. And be self-ironic, laugh at yourself. <laughs> wow, I'm in a process. It, it's so powerful. I'm living through this or that event in my life, whatever it is. And two other moments are always look inside of yourself and ask yourself how much I love and step number st seven have your own inner space your inner self your own personal space and realm where you don't invite anybody unless you invite someone it's all about you it's your mirror you can always ask it back like if if i am that myself and what resonates that is your direction and guide thank you very much Until we have 10 more minutes of our round table, that I'll be very brief about my most intense uh, experience. In, the, in my opinion, the most healing experience from nature that we get that uh, permits us to, to touch our, our uh, shadow aspect is our sexual experience. Again, from my experience, this uh, uh, for altered states, the sexual uh, encounters or experiences are the most powerful. This is my area of interest. And, and maybe transpersonal uh, sexology uh, is uh, my area of speciality, uh, uh, huh? novel one. Where can we join? In the backstage. <laughs> okay, you know me well. Vladimir, is it possible to go 10 minutes into lunchtime so we can finish this process and maybe Vladimir, a few other questions? Может быть, 10 минут от обеда занятий и взять какие-то еще вопросы из аудитории? Yes? Да, можно, конечно. Спасибо. Николай, в словах о своем опыте, самым сильным, самым мощным. Самым сильным, мощным. Окей, мой strongest experience of practices when I started was with a child of 11 brought by the mother of 23 I explain to them what is expanding your consciousness, what is shamanism about, how do you connect with nature, 
все объясняется, объясняется раздельно. So I explain everything to them, and they accept it, how to love, how to they guide their lives. And through such uh, seances, and then a man calls me at 49, and he's telling me very funny jokes. I'm asking him serious questions, he's telling me jokes. Is that normal? Yes. And uh, I, people uh, tell me, even old ladies, they want to feel young again or just to recall themselves when they were small. Uh, girls. I, I also, as a woman, uh, as a man, I'm sorry, uh, tell uh, women how to bring out their uh, uh, womanly powers. I love working with people. I like uh, to bring beauty to all things in life, to bring aesthetics. So. Uh, these sessions, private sessions, were the most uh, rewarding. I, I tell men how to become stronger, how to become wiser. I also get feedback, enormous support from my uh, uh, friends as well. I do. I had a lot of bright experiences during meditations, prayers, during my psychedelic journeys. They came up spontaneously. Such events, it's hard to just pick one. It's like a, 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 a necklace, and it's hard to uh, to tell which of the bees is uh, the brightest. But now we're at this round table, we're talking about everyday life, and it seems to me that the peak experiences that we had uh, during the altered states of mind are given to us so we could uh, bring something into our everyday life. So everyday of your life would be the brightest, uh, like, peak experiences. Each day would, would bring you some joy, inner awareness, mindfulness, what happens to me every day. So, in my opinion, if every day would be the day, then maybe this is the, uh, uh, the essence of all these peak experience, meditations, the outcome, the result, and the future. How spontaneous they are doesn't matter. Thank you. Vladimir, do we have several more minutes? Okay, we have a question here. Uh, sharing your peak experiences has refreshed my memories as well. With your kind permission, I'll just tell you one extraordinary. I, I just received once a medical um, uh, evidence that uh, the real world is not as uh, simplistic as we think. Uh, there was just an ordinary day, but I, w I had a slap on the cheek. I didn't drink or smoke. I was uh, surrounded by colleagues in Moscow during daytime. And I, w and I was j jotting down, trying 
uh, to put down, jot down their hallucinations from a patient in another city, a visual, auditory, etc. But I could feel the slap on my cheek. Uh, my cheek got uh, red hot, and I could feel the vibrations in my ear, my brain, as if a door was slammed closed. But even if that would would have happened in the physical world, there was silence all around. Nobody heard anything around from my colleagues. Yekaterina, my assistant, uh, who helped me to work with this patient, but suddenly felt a severe headache, me as well. And then this sud utmost silence and this severe headache uh, persisted for 24 hours. So maybe uh, uh, Stephen would explain what, what, what it is, what, what happened to me. That was six years. So which spirit did slap my cheek? Please tell me. Well, not being there, I can't really say. If you really want, I could journey and ask. If you really want, I could journey and ask. Спиритуальный и узнать, что это был за дух, который вас тогда ударил. Вы знаете, трудно сказать прямо так. Вот это значит, что был вот именно вот этот дух. Знаете, некоторые духи проявляются по-разному для разных людей. Ваш опыт, как вы его описываете, не дает ключей для утвердительного ответа, что это был за дух. Давайте потом э, поговорим один на один об этом, если хотите. Ну что, наше время... А? А, объявление, да. Наше время закончилось. Вот, и сейчас небольшое объявление. Now a little announcement, please. Dear participants of the...